This is a demonstration of a calcium hardness drop count test kit using endpoint ID procedures. The first step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to gather an accurate sample. The smallest change in sample size will lead to inaccurate results. Before gathering your sample, it's important to rinse the vial three times with the sample to be tested. This minimizes the chance of contamination from a previous titration. To get an accurate sample size, you want to hold the vial close to eye level. Once you feel you have an accurate sample, place the vial on a level surface and bend down to eye level. When performing a drop count titration, a white background can provide contrast to better see the color changes. A cabinet tray or a white paper towel can provide that contrast. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to add 5 drops of calcium hardness buffer. Be sure to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent, it's important to swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to add one scoop of calcium hardness indicator powder. After the addition of the powder, swirl the vial to make sure the powder is completely dissolved. In this case, the sample is turned red, indicating that hardness is present. If the sample had turned blue, then no hardness is present and the titration is complete. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to perform the titration. Each bottle of titrin is labeled with the equivalency and sample size it was manufactured for. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. Be sure to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, you want to swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. According to the endpoint ID procedure, the titration is complete when the sample is changed from red to blue.